Mercedes-Benz and reliability don't necessarily go hand in hand. Most people buy Mercedes-Benz because of twin turbo V8 engines give you a lot of great performance and zoom power. And Mercedes-Benz builds some of the most stylish vehicles on the planet today. So for some people, reliability doesn't matter, but for those who actually care about how reliable their cars are, this list of 10 Mercedes-Benz that rank as some of the worst vehicles from a reliability standpoint are definitely gonna appeal to you. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. One of the first most unreliable Mercedes-Benz that you should probably avoid unless you really had to have a 2007, 2008, possibly W204 chassis design is what we're looking at right here. Yes, it's a Mercedes C-Class and yes, it carries a wonderful V8 that a lot of people loved and were highly anticipating. Let's take a quick look and kind of get to the point of why these vehicles are highly unreliable. We firstly fit and finish was a problem. We had broken plastic parts there. The headlight washers didn't always work properly. We had fit and finish issues there as well as there's a lot of components on the body panels that tend to pop off or come loose and just generally didn't hold up all that well as a whole. Now, this is a beautiful vehicle. It's an AMG and yes, it does carry a set of quad exhaust tips on the C63 version here is what we're talking about. It's a very basic interior. The interior was relatively modest, but some of the buttons didn't hold up very well either. But junk plastic and poor buttons don't necessarily relegate it to negative duty in terms of reliability. It's actually based on the engine and the drivetrain what's under the hood. That was a 6.2 liter V8 naturally aspirated, relatively high revving, had huge capacity and was just a beast, made some of the best exhaust barks in the industry as a whole. And that's why enthusiasts really love these cars. Rear wheel drive, huge power, big V8. What's not to love about that? But there's a few issues. One big issue was the M156. We had the head bolt issue. You could get a whole series of problems from leaking head gaskets. Of course, the head's shifting on the engine and that's not a good scene. When that starts to happen, everything shuffles and moves out of a line. You had clicking noises sometimes when you start the key. You also had potentially topping up of oil antifreeze. You had mixing because now all of a sudden you had some coolant winding up in the oil. And a lot of this was came down to a simple fact that the head bolts that were actually holding and sandwiching the heads to the case of the engine were actually starting to corrode. They corrode, then they start to slacken off or they break, and then the heads start to shuffle around on there. And then you have all kinds of problems. You have the gaskets, you have bent rods as a result, mixing, lots of problems. That was one of the big issues. You also had camshafts and lifter issues where sometimes you get that start and you might have a soft, weak lifter that actually would drain down or bleed down and you would actually get that initial rattling noise on startup. Of course, the cam lobes would prematurely wear. There was a lubrication issue with that. And of course, as cam lobes wear, you start to lose performance of the engine and outright catastrophic failure sometimes. The one thing, if you did have one of these cars, you need to have it. The big key thing is making sure that that clicking or that rattling noise would dissipate and actually go away within the first minute or so. If it's dead to continue to rattle on for minutes after, there's probably going to be a bigger issue. Also, frequent oil changes were very, very important. Another key issue is the cabin air filter. There was lots of issues with some of these cars stinking up a storm. You know that smell when you have dirty feet like that and it just smells rotten? Yeah, that's what's going on. A lot of people complain to that. Now, that's not reliability, but again as well, duly noted. The engine, as great as it is, definitely has its share of problems. Another Mercedes that isn't the top pop for reliability. As a matter of fact, it's a little further down the list. Not the worst car by any means, but it's not great. And we're looking at this generation 2012 to about 2015. It's a C-Class. Yes, absolutely. It's a base turbo four charged four cylinder engine. Makes about 200 ponies strapped together with an automatic transmission, lightly bolted together just for maximum efficiency. Of course, what we're looking at here is a C250 here by Mercedes. And this one's a Formatic, so it's all wheel drive, which makes that fun and fresh. Of course, you do have cute little handles and interior that doesn't wear all that well. I mean, yeah, you do have sunroof and all of the other amenities, including the classic Mercedes-Benz grill, the three-pointed star that definitely gives this the looks. Looks very much like its big brother, the E-Class, which is one of the best in this generation. But there's been a few problems along the way, and even though it's a simpler, more basic Mercedes-Benz, there's still a few problems that likely gonna run you many, many trips to the dealer. Door handles like this, basically ripping off or snapping, either outside, inside. Also, if you look right there, the Takata airbags on the driver's side as well as the passenger side have been a known issue. That's the infamous Takata airbags with the inflator that literally blows up and sh hits people with shards of metal and injures and memes and I mean that's not unique to this brand of course BMW Honda I mean a lot of brands are using that manufacturer and unfortunately it's starting to catch up reliability I mean we have fit and finish problems 
rust issues there where these vehicles don't hold up all that well. We definitely see problems where you see get rust in those areas, rust down here, rust along the door wells, and that just makes the car feel out of sorts in a few short years. But the big problem is under the hood, and that's where the reliability factor comes in. There's been many people talk about overheating engines. Actually, in one case, there's a person that actually thought, oh, the car's running really hot. They pulled over, touched the hood, flipped the hood, and boof, burns into flames. So, but that's not typical. Typical is on startup, you get this rattling noise, and it could be a variety of different things, from lifters to timing chains to tensioners, as well as the ramps, that whole hardware. And there's been cases where people have replaced part of it, upper end, timing gear, or even as much as the entire engine altogether. Now, if you go and replace a full engine like this, it's easy to replace the whole value of that car because that just leaves you with another trip to the bank, emptying your bank account to get this car back on the road. So not the worst, but definitely there are significant issues with rattling noises, timing chain cooling, overheating, and check engine lights. Another one definitely makes the mark for one of the most unreliable late model Mercedes-Benz is this little SUV right here. There's all kinds of problems. Well, let's start with the e-call system. Problems with that, no doubt about it. Faulty airbag systems on these vehicles, of course, you get the little light illuminated, as well as the power cable that runs the main power cable from the battery to keep the rest of the system powered up and energized has been a problem with intermittent connections and trouble areas. Of course, you also have big, big issues with premature tire wear on some of these vehicles. And if you actually opt up for the off-road package, there's an optional air ride suspension. Now, this vehicle was obviously checked in by a customer that was saying, hey, my vehicle is sitting lower than it normally should be. So they drove it into the dealer. The dealer questioned, yeah, I, I don't know about that. So what they did was they went and put this tape marks on here. When the vehicle rolled in, this tape was actually fully slacked up. It was tight because they stick it here and then they stick it there and then it sits tight. But then if you look over here, you'll notice this was tight, this is tight, but now look at this, loose all that. In other words, you can tell the vehicle sitting on its rump. So the air ride self-leveling suspension is actually shot on this vehicle. And that is another typical failure point. Another issue is some of the plastics, the door handles ripping off. I personally own a C300 of the same generation and the actual speaker in the door popped right out of the panel. Yes, as well as the rocker panels on the sides popped off. Two things simultaneously when I hit a set of railroad tracks that weren't even that aggressive and the vehicle started popping off. 30,000 kilometers on the clock and the vehicle start coming apart. Now remember, the G300 here is a very similar generational vehicle. And yeah, fundamentally, it's a simple vehicle from a luxury standpoint, but in the Mercedes world, it is a little bit of a downgrade. You do have these great tail lights and of course, beautiful little exhaust tips there. And what we're talking about is a GLC 300 and it is formatic. So people love them because they're all wheel drive. But we can't also forget to mention that there's that engine under the hood. It's a French derived little hot rod. It's a two liter turbocharged four that makes about 240 and change. And the problem is with that, there's been cases where people using pure fueling, not adequate oil servicing. And of course, just in general, there's been issues with them popping holes in the pistons. Have you ever heard of that issue? Yes, hold pistons. In other words, all of a sudden, poof, big blue smoke out the back and your engine's done. That has been a common issue with several of these vehicles noted all over the internet. So unfortunately, GLC 300 fundamentally seems like a reliable package and it's easy to own because it's not the one most expensive vehicle. It's not an S-Class where it's gonna cost you a ton, but the problem is it's not all that reliable, the GLC 300. And another vehicle in the Mercedes world that is just considered one of the most unreliable vehicles is this giant unit here. Look at this monstrosity. What we're looking at here is a Mercedes Sprinter van. Yeah, there's lots in Europe, there's lots all North America, and it's great from a work perspective. And why is that people buy them? Well, A, Mercedes, they go on the name. The three-pointed star always sort of dazzles. The thing that you get this elevated height up here allows you to walk in without having to drop your head down. You're a lot of typical domestic minivans and vans that people use for work often mean you have to duck down or roll, crawl in on your knees. But a lot of these Mercedes Sprinter vans provide this flexibility that allow you to open that door and walk right in. Even if you're anywhere up to 6'2 or there or beyond, you can still walk right in, no problem. That extended height here allows you to walk right in. Of course, these Sprinter vans have that level of flexibility. That's why they're so popular. But there have been issues. 17, for example, pretty big drastic recalls for all kinds of a variety of failures from it to cat airbags to mechanical problems and brakes. Did you know that some of the steering linkage here has been a big issue where you actually lose your power steering 
and this vehicle, you're unable to actually steer out of harm's way, and this vehicle can put you in a predicament in a very unsafe situation. There's also been complaints about faulty brakes in there where they don't actually slow the vehicle down adequately, as well as seat belts set up, and a lot of seat belts even won't recall or correctly retract, and there's a problem with the seat belt configuration. And another problem here is, just look under here. Down there, you have this drive shaft that runs from the front, goes all the way back, and goes into the rear differential here where it actually connects up to the rear wheels and drives the power to the rear. Well, there's cases where that drive shaft has snapped and then it actually severs the gas tank and actually causes a gas rupture and potential fire. So if you need the flexibility for work and you need something that meets the criteria like the Sprinter van does, then go right ahead. But just know that you're not likely going to keep that vehicle on the road 365. And if that's your means of generating income, you might want to have at least a couple in the fleet. Okay, okay, here's the next one. That's literally a disaster. Have you ever heard ABC? Yeah, active body control. Are your wallets ready for that one? Of course, we have the W221 edition, which is essentially 2007 in North America, 2006 across the globe to about 2013. The S-Class came in a series of different vehicles with gas jobbies of different capacities, AMG versions, diesel versions. Depends on what part of the globe you're from, but it had a lot of different options and a lot of technology buried under that skin there. It is just a nightmare. Beautiful when it was new, but let me tell you one thing. This is the epitome of overly complex luxury vehicle that becomes a ruthless money pit. Before we get into some of the mechanical issues, we look at some of the fit and finish problems. These tend to come off, they're kind of flimsy. This isn't a well-made vehicle overall. As a matter of fact, it also was very prone to getting rust in areas like that, getting prone to rust along the door panels. You'd get rust down in this area here. And of course you could potentially get rust on this trailing edge of this trunk lid here. Oh, there it is, see? The rust there and the rust along that trim. But you can tell this model from the other ones in this awkward looking tail light assembly, almost what the bangle button BMW was doing in similar generation. What we have here are these flares. Now this looks sort of interesting and they have very great little handles in there. But the interior wasn't all that well put together and a lot of that failed as well. Sure, sunroof, that's the least of your concerns if that fails. One of the big issues here was the automatic transmission. If you happen to be rocking the old 7G automatic transmission in this unit, you're likely going to have see problems with the transmission control unit, the TCU, with the conductor plate and its valve body. Some problems with the transmission can basically cause jerking, driving, all kinds of hesitation and go into limp mode. And to fix or replace that TCU was an exercise in fertility or you literally didn't care about money because it was going to cost you an arm and three legs. Now fortunately, if you still run one of these units, you probably are aware that there's aftermarket opportunities to fix it. You can take it to a little electronics store and some of those wizards now can fix that up for you. Then under the hood of the gas jobbies, like this one here is an S550, we're talking about gas engine specifically. There is a plastic variable valve intake manifold actuator that's associated with that. Also what BMW is doing in their S85 engines and the S65 engines where they have those plastic gears in the intake manifold and they would shear off and then you go into limp mode. That's also big dollars and it's going to be quite extensive to fix usually results in a check engine light and catastrophic dollar and wallet emptying. You also could get excessive buildup in the PCV due to carbon and the direct injected engines were a big issue. You could expect or anticipate oil leaks as well from the cam on the heads. You can get a camshaft issue with the plastic cam plugs that essentially would puke oil out all over the place. And you basically have this sitting in your driveway every single day. Then as I mentioned, the active body control unit also tied in with the ECU and a whole host of different sensors and actuators usually meant a massive, severe second or third mortgage just to get that vehicle turned around and getting it dialed in and working properly again. Hugely expensive car to repair, hugely complex, doesn't hold up structurally very well, the interior isn't shakes, rattle and roll, transmission engine failures, that's why you really don't see many of these around anymore. The S550 in the W221. And just when you thought some of the older ones were the problem areas, well, what we have here is a 2020 rolling turd. Not sure how this ever came to be. As a matter of fact, look in NHTSA, National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. What they do is define the complaints by customers. They also log all of the recalls of every manufacturer. And did you realize that this particular model has logged approximately 28 recalls thus far? Recalls are safety items, issues that could cause a safety implication to the driver. 
whatever. It's a sad state of affairs. Now, granted, this is a great looking Benz. Don't get me wrong. First time I saw this newer generation, I was blown away. I thought it was a great looking unit. Of course, this one here has some great little vents right there and it's gorgeous wheels, of course, red calipers, lots of running gear that looks great. Look, it's a twin turbo V8 engine, big calipers and tires. Of course, naturally right here, we have the big three-pointed star. So this SUV is bold as can be. Gorgeous looking unit, oversized wheels. You've got AMG badging everywhere. Probably the nicest interior this side of a Range Rover right now. Big roof racks on top. And what we're looking at here is a GLE right there, 63S. Has a set of quad tips and it's a gorgeous looking unit, absolutely. So that is first why people are buying them. Where should we start here, folks? Windshield wipers stop working randomly and just go out completely. Usually some relay or fusing issue. Headlights right there, often another issue. These headlights stop working or intermittently or as well you're gonna have an issue with the actual brightness and they do tend to run a little bit lower beam. Fuel. You have fuel leaks right there. Underneath you've got the tank. And of course, sometimes there's been comments of people having fuel leaks or fuel pouring out causing a potential fire or a risk of fire. Many cases as well, corrosion is noted. So corrosion on body panels, but more importantly, corrosion underneath the chassis. So chassis corrosion, where you're finding all kinds of corrosion and rust on the frame parts and components, that is a weakness right there. There's also been codes with faulty drivetrain systems and malfunctions, usually result in check engine lights. We also can't forget about some of the general wear and tear items that just don't hold up all that well. Body panels, like this, these can stop working. Seat belts have actually been noted to be a problem. Fitment, panels, where panels crack loose and some of the connections to those panels don't hold up all that well. Body panels that start dropping from their main frame and the connection points just start to snap. There's too many plastic fittings holding everything everything together. So the Mercedes GLE is a great technology, has lots of style design elements, great performance options in these vehicles. The sad reality is as we transition into a place of quick manufacturing efficiencies means that there's more plastic fittings, means that there's quicker adjustments, people are finding shortcuts at the manufacturing level, and cheaper materials for cost cutting often means that some of these vehicles are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And try to compare a brand new Mercedes like this to an old school 190E. Not a chance, not even close. The next Benz is not all that reliable and there's already been some problems out of the gate. Clearly, some of the issues are actually designed, some of them are programming, and some of them are just overly technologically advanced, meaning that there's just too much going on and likely going to be a big, big problem in the near future. Sure, you don't have oil leaks, cam plug issues, you don't have coolant problems, but you're gonna have a whole new set of problems that you're gonna find with this particular Mercedes right here. And yes, there's already some recalls on this particular vehicle. Of course, what we're looking at here is an interesting looking little unit right there. We're talking about the EQE 500 right here of course you got the backup camera that has been known to be a problem this is a formatic but that's because pretty much electric motors are driving all wheels so it's a little bit different doesn't have your conventional drive shaft there of course here you have some great tech going on there but there's more to go wrong electric handle pop out electric mirrors electric everything on this vehicle and when electrics and too much technology come together in one package you often have issues of course some problems with headlights failing the function of course some people comment that these vehicles sit too low and that's likely going to be a problem for speed bumps humps potholes and you're going to end up dare damaging the carriage underneath but that's not where it begins and ends look through the back right here that little rear window in the back is literally barely a part porthole and seeing out there could pose a potential hazard for drivers but then in the front you have issues already with the steering where the steering needed reprogramming the steering has had numerous issues and complaints by the customers we also have problems with the brakes of course right there you can see them tucked underneath there the brakes have been an issue and some of it is because of the dynamic generating regeneration in the braking system both needs reprogramming and as well people have commented that when you go to put your foot down the brake pedal isn't totally where you expect it to be simply because as you let off the gas the brakes automatically kick in to regenerate power back into the batteries and while you're doing that you often wind up with a situation that's actually dangerous to the driver there's also been comments about ergonomics and the way the 
the display is actually situated so high it actually puts the steering wheel and the driver display in an awkward position where you can't barely see over it and you can't see your display. Other than that, a lot of this is ergonomics, but it also been ranked as Consumers Reports least reliable luxury EV in the market today. Mercedes and Tesla are literally swapping punches for the least reliable packaging in an electrical vehicle market. So I have to believe that time will tell, but clearly already with some of the bugs and the problems and the complaints, that this is one of Mercedes-Benz least reliable vehicles. The next car is right here. This is one of those models that just isn't necessarily gonna take you to town on one big catastrophic failure. It's literally gonna be death by a thousand drops. Just because of the quality control, you're probably gonna find lots of little nickel and dime issues that eventually just drain your bank account. It's a slightly older generation of Mercedes, as you can see right here. Of course, we've had to replace a the headlight there. In this side is obviously a brand new one. That one's faded probably stopped working and as we cycle around one thing that you notice with these generation they don't have great rust resistance to them of course you have this little vent here and tiny mirrors for the day little simple door handles an interior with fit and finish that really wasn't all that well put together another thing that you can often find with some of these generations are excessive rust this one's a clean one other than the fact that this one has seen some damage along the way we're looking at is a CLK 500 now some of these older generation engines that are non-AMG can be somewhat reliable but it's all of the plastics around that start to break and crumble the fit and finish and materials aren't great the rust yes it just does that but there's lots of issues number one let's talk about transmission and engine mounts a lot of these vehicles they start to get feel a little rough a lot of times it's just mounts and they just need to be replaced the problem is they're not that cheap and every time you take it to the dealer for that it's big money we also have the ac stepper motor you can get a rear main seal fail which is the seal that comes off of your engine into the drive the transmission and you can will definitely have a rear main seal leak there's that's pretty typical valve cover gaskets in the engine typically you're going to find a lot of oil dripping off the side of the engine you might even sell smell some smoke burning off of there and wafting into the cab and transmission plugs wiring issues a lot of electric problems little gremlins check engine lights of course we also have seat heaters that fail sometimes there's buttons that sometimes let go and the seat heaters stop working and i've known people who've had those sort of electric issues the third brake light on those that are equipped can go on them as well as I mentioned the seat belt mechanisms go you can also get suspension bushing so you get the squeaks and the rattles and you start getting banging sensations across the suspension when you start hitting rougher roads like this you start getting more banging and clunking noises not an uncommon phenomenon the SOS malfunction can go these windshield wipers right here will stop working from time to time that has been an issue as well as these xenon headlights as I mentioned this was probably replaced the ballasts have been known to fail so Lots of little electrical knickknacks. You have lots of suspension problems. And we won't even talk about the engine failures other than the fact that you can sustain leaks and coolant problems. Of course, you can see overheating with these. Generally speaking, stay on top of the maintenance and they're relatively reliable, but that's if you throw tons of money at them. So generally speaking, because they don't hold up all that well and it's a nickel and dime type of car, I'd consider them not reliable. The CLK models, either the coupe or the cabriolet like we're looking at here. And another problem area vehicle that literally is not reliable, it's this unit right here. Now I know you're thinking, okay, that's a smart car. Yes, that was Swatch and Mercedes-Benz getting together. So largely most of these parts are built and designed and engineered by Mercedes-Benz. So it does qualify. Mercedes did sell these out of their dealer network. And the only benefits are the fact that they're good on fuel. And as well, if you do happen to get a fender bender, you're able to change some of the body panels fairly easily. Transmissions, they're slim and slurpy the transmissions don't work all that well there's been lots of issues with absolutely failing lurching aggressive shifting and just catastrophically failing never really been a great proponent of that gearbox as well we have engine issues now some of them are diesel some of them are gas there's been problems there as well another big issue are suspension and brakes brakes are underpowered even for a vehicle of this magnitude brakes are small wallowy as well as the suspension it's not tuned properly so as you hit these wallows in the road it tends to sort of give you this feeling of sort of slingshot and jumping around it has a very unstable feel to it in certain road conditions but it's overall not a very reliable vehicle so on one hand you think that you're saving all this money on fuel on the other hand you're giving it all the right back to the service shop just because on maintenance reliability challenges with the engine gearbox suspension weak brakes you name it. Well, we'll give you another one, and it's not the E350 from 2006 and 7. Those are flops. But let's actually talk about one that's a little more contemporary. For example, 
A vehicle just like this, we're looking at the 2015 and newer Mercedes-Benz C300. This one here has obviously the turbo six cylinder engine, but it's more importantly, it's the C300 that we're talking about here. Yeah, you've got great one touch handles. And of course these beautiful LEDs, especially on the coupe. The coupe does look particularly striking. Of course, you do have a little wing on the back for some of these on the C43 AMG version with a set of quad pipes and all kinds of great vents and beautiful wheels. You do have the big sunroof on top, but that's not where the issues are with this vehicle. Some of the issues and reasons why this vehicle won't last all that long come right in here. So some of the issues that we've had on the inside and you can pretty much guarantee you're going to experience on the inside of these vehicles are glitches with the infotainment system, the MMI or HMI system as well. We had a speaker pop out of the door panel, very similar to the GLC, as this is a GLC interior, more or less, and the same problems apply. Okay, let's get out and let's check the outside. A problem that you would actually anticipate with these vehicles, why it's not all that reliable is what's going on under the hood. Of course, we do have electric problems you would expect with some of these vehicles, but the big issue is that French derived 2.0 liter turbo four cylinder engine. Yes, in fact, there's a lot of issues with that. Now the transmission seems to be pretty stout at nine speed auto. It does make 240 and change horsepower out of that four banger, but we've had some problems already. I would anticipate that some of the, as you hear on the forums, you're gonna hear more and more problems with people actually holding pistons, that's right. Pistons blowing hole in the piston and then you see black smoke coming out the back and you see check engine lights and a lot of rattling and noise followed by an engine stopping. That's sadly is what some customers are going through and, and some of it actually they say is related to poor fueling or maybe NOx sensor management or some kind of fuel injection system problem or you're losing, using too low a grade of fuel. But nonetheless, that seems to be an issue that's tying up the reliability of these cars. And that literally will be one of the showstoppers for a lot of these C300s. As mentioned, many people just don't care about reliability. They just drive these Mercedes-Benz because of great value on the used car market. You can get a lot of bang for a buck, great clout style and the leading technology. That's why people buy them. But with all of that said, right there, check it out. You're gonna love it. That is why are used Mercedes-Benz so cheap. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.